less. Okay, people, today let's take a quick look at the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Ahsoka Wave 1 with Morgan Elsbeth, the HK-87 assassin droid, Ezra Bridger Lothal, Sabine Wren, and then, of course, Ahsoka. And boy, after a dry spell, I have been all over Star Wars Black Series lately, huh? Last week was Walmart's Bad Batch Season 2 and the Book of Boba Fett Black or Santin. This week, Ahsoka Wave 1, which I didn't have pre-ordered. I just left a fate, and fate smiled upon me. I went to Walmart today. There they were, just sitting on the peg saying, Robo, buy us take us home with you. And I was like, okay. Because like I said during the weekly, I am loving the Ahsoka show and anything they make from that show, I will buy. I will purchase. I will take a look at and probably put in my display. Now you'll notice I didn't grab Chopper out of this assortment. One, he's branded as Rebels, and two, it's the exact same figure that I already have. I was lucky enough to grab this the first time around. And I hear what you're saying. It's the exact same situation for Ahsoka, but my reasoning here, my rationale for buying an extra figure is that one of them's going to go into a custom poncho, or I'm going to customize one into Ahsoka the White. But I don't know if I'll go that deep with it, because surely they're going to give us that look sometime. I'm stammering and stuttering because nothing is guaranteed. It's your standard Star Wars Black Series packaging. There's the window, there's the logos, there's the name for each one, and because it's the Ahsoka show, we have that kind of baby blue color motif going all the way across. Warning, choking hazards, small parts. Do not put them in your mouth, except for apparently Morgan Elsbeth because she doesn't have that warning she doesn't come with any small parts. There you go, there's the mural unbroken all the way across. On the back is that art again with bios for each character, just giving you a little background, just telling you what's going on with them in the show. I'm running out of stuff to say about what could be on the bios as you pause and read it for yourself. One, two, three, four, five. On the other side, just some window with that color again on top, more window on bottom, legalese, barcodes. Since I already have the figure and it's more of a comparison, let's start off with Ahsoka. And yep, that is Ahsoka. In fact, it is the exact same Ahsoka we already have. Sculpt-wise, there are a couple of paint tweaks. I can't quite tell if the pants are a different color. It may be a shade off, but there is a definite difference between the overlay up top. It's especially apparent on the back. The new one, which is over here, I'm trying to... I'm separated. It is much lighter than the old one. It is more of a gray with just a hint of blue. This has a lot more blue to it with a hint of gray. And then the blue stripes on the head are just ever so slightly lighter. And they're actually in a different position, barely. You have to put them side by side and stare for a while to see it. But you can see right here, this is closer to the headband. This one, well, okay, it's easier to tell on the other side. There you go. This one is right up on the headband. This one has some gap between it. Then you get down to the ends and it's the same general design like this is right here, but you can see that this one's higher up. So there's more blue down here on the tip. The new one doesn't have as much color down at the end. The silver hanging off the belt and then the buckle and the gold beside that ring is a lot cleaner on the new one. On the old one, see where it bled down right here and the gold buttons are off a little bit. And then there's the face. This is the new one. This is the old one. First off, the new one isn't quite as shiny. There's still a sweatiness to it, but not as bad as the old one. For the markings on the face, on the old one, it's centered right here on the bridge of the nose, but it's not centered with this diamond up on the headband. On the new one, the face markings are centered up here, but then skew a little bit off to her left at the bridge of the nose. And then there's the eyes. On the new one, they're sharper. There's more of a distinction between the whites and then the color of the eye and the shadow around it. On the old one, it kind of all blurs together. I'm not sure if it's the shininess of the photo reel or if the white isn't quite as crisp as the new one. But now that we're getting up close and personal, my old one also missed on the eye sculpt a bit. You can see the eye floated up a little. Her left isn't too bad. On the new one, it seems that they nailed both of the eye sculpts, put the paint right where it needed to be. So all in all, I'm not mad that I got a new one since it does look a little bit better than the old. There's nothing wrong with this, but she's gonna be the one to get the poncho, I think. Other than that, you have Ahsoka's costume. There's the collar sculpted up on the separate neck, coming down to these 
kind of vest over a shirt. Have the sculpted crisscross on the sleeves with these armor bits on the outside. That's the same thing down here on the kick pads and the foot. Some ninja toe going on. Her baggy pants that look fantastic because they're not broken up by the articulation. They were able to integrate that into a flap, kind of a cover, and everything's behind that. But even when you bend the knee, it doesn't really break it up. It still looks okay. There is a little bleed to the silver right there now that I'm super up close, but still cleaner than the old one. But that's also to give you a good look at the intricate detail around the belt. These wraps coming all the way around with the waist piece and the ties hanging down in the back. All in all, a good looking Ahsoka. Articulation wise, you have a lot of stuff hanging off the head down over the shoulder. So it does kind of get in the way of the dumbbell joint at the top of the neck with the ball at the bottom. Up about there, down some tilt, then left and right. Very nice butterfly joint. In fact, I'm going to say it's one of the best Star Wars ones they've done. Outside of that is a peg going into the shoulder, allows rotation all the way around with a hinge that goes up to the there. Hinge swivel at the elbow comes up past 90 and then rotates in and out. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge up and down, which is nice because of saber wielding. That's on both hands. Dumbbell joint mid torso gets some hula hoop inside that belt. Ball coming out to the hips, come up to here. This is flexible, gets out of the way. There's back and then there's out. You wouldn't know it at first glance, but there is a thigh swivel nicely hidden by the sculpt itself. Like we talked about, there is a hinge swivel at the knee. You have this flap coming down that hides all of that, comes up to to about 90 and then rotates. Hinge at the ankle goes way back and way forward and then a front facing pen for rocker. For accessories she comes with both of her sabers. There's different hilt links. There's different blade links and those are removable. I, this one is bent. I may have done that when I was getting it out of the package. And then there's rings on the end that go on these pegs right here that aren't really noticeable if you're standing back a little bit. They're not the most secure because of how short they are but well okay don't come off then. They're pretty secure, even though they are short. Putting the blades back into the hilt, remember that the peg is shaped, so you rotate it around until it fits down in there. If you have it sideways, don't force it. Just turn and sh That's how I display Ahsoka. That looks great. Next up is Morgan Elsbeth, because with this figure, what you see is what you get. Because this is all you get. The figure. No accessories. Now that I have it out and everything, I like it. Mostly because of this. I don't know if it's those sultry eyes or the smokiness around them or the expression on the face, but I feel like this resemblance is dead on. She just has that Witch of Dathomir look. Like we saw in Ahsoka, as far as I can tell, the print for the eyes is inside the skull. The forehead marking looks good. There's a sheen to it right there. See that shining back on you? That is cool. The hair fading from black to gray is neat, but I wish it was a bit more transitional. You know, I wish there was more fade. That may be a wash to the gray to bring out the sculpt, to separate things. Then the gray hair strands hanging down on the side of the face is awesome. But as much as I praise the eyes for being dead on, the lips are off. You can see that the print is low. It's missing the top lip a little bit and hanging over the bottom. But what makes it worse is that black line that's supposed to be on the sculpt of the mouth and it's down on the lip. But like I always say, when you get it on the shelf or arm's length or just looking at it in hand, it's not as noticeable. As far as the clothes go, at first I thought, man, they got this figure out quick. This had to be been a Mandalorian sculpt that was never released. But looking at the belt, it is accurate to Ahsoka show. It's the same with the upper torso. I have kind of this outer vest hanging over some wrapped under torso. The wraps on the arms aren't accurate to either Mando or Ahsoka. In Mando, it's more of just a sleeve. In Ahsoka, it's crisscrossed, but it's wrapped, so it's close. Again, I think this comes down to using some concept art or something. Because for the skirt in the show, there's actually little itty bitty intricate bursts of color of red working its way down onto this part. Honestly, I didn't even notice that in the show. I had to go Googling for some close-ups. When it comes to that skirt piece, there is a flap attached to the belt on the front and the back. Then the side flaps are a separate piece tucked up under the belt. So even though it looks traffic coney, it allows for leg movement outside of those cuts or some flexibility to the skirt to get up and out of the way. It doesn't look natural if she was sitting down, but you get the idea. But for the legs underneath, there is this wrapped look from waist to the bottom of the feet, almost mummy-like. And look at that. For once, I recognized reused parts. The legs are actually dark rays. And I do not have a problem with that at all. If it was there, go ahead and use it because it's under a dress. This will never be seen again on my shelf. Is it accurate? 
you tell me. <laughs> I just know that it works. So more power to them. Going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck with a ball going down in the body. No hair hanging down so she can look up, she can look down. So much tilt. Mother's to the left of me, Thrawn to the right. There is a dumbbell joint way down in there, but because of the sculpt and this coming out over the shoulder and going deep down in there, you get about this much movement. Then the pin coming out to the shoulder rotates around, but you're gonna shut out because of the tunic. Hinge at the shoulder comes up to there. Hinge and swivel at the the elbow comes up to about 90 then rotates swivel at the wrist and an up and down hinge as if she needed to hold a weapon dumbbell joint at the waist under that belt lots of hula hoop the skirt has a lot of cuts to it so the ball coming out to the hip comes up to there and back to there and out cut at the thigh hinge and swivel at the knee does come past 90 swivels in and out hinge at the ankle goes back and forward and then a front facing peg for rocker like i said no accessories but if you collect marvel legends you may have one of these but the clip is too big for the arm and it's bubbly i think of dathomir magic as being fiery plus this is unmistakably marvel legends it's kind of the same thing for this effect piece from the power rangers pumpkin wrapper it's not fire it's kind of cool but uh, it's not Star Warsy. If I had more faith in that hand coming out, I could use this Doctor Strange effect. But uh, again, it's kind of on the nose. The orb from Guardians of the Galaxy 1 could probably double for that map thing, but she can't really hold it. It's just... Oops. The hands are very grippy and they have up and down hinges, so it's probably made for a Beskar spear. And she can get some action poses, but this puts her into Mando show territory. There, she used this spear. In Ahsoka, she uses a bunch of green magic. If I had my way, I would have this Doctor Doom with those green fire effects to put around her arm, but I don't have that Doctor Doom, unfortunately. Not yet. Now I have more reason to get it. Next up is the HK-87 assassin droid. And unlike Morgan Elsbeth, who I ended up liking more as time went on, I'm liking this less the more I mess with it. It looks cool, but it is fiddly. And I say that because this is my first experience with this sculpt, with an HK-87 droid. I didn't get the one from Mandalorian. Like I said, I, it's been a dry spell. Sculpt-wise, it looks cool. You have the face up here with this and this and the visor underneath, kind of a helmet look on top, kibble on the sides. Then we get to your standard Star Wars droid anatomy. You have the chest piece over some inner workings. I mean, it's not like wires like C-3PO, but it's still a different color in between your upper body and your lower body. The belt is a separate piece hanging over. That's pretty cool, but it is attached in the back so you can only angle it up and down a little bit. Separate shoulder pad glued down at the bottom so when you raise the arm up, it rides up onto the torso. Bandings and some forearms and a hand at the end of the arm. <gasps> oh, what are they doing? Crotch piece again working into, uh, see, that looks thin at the hips, but it does hide the thigh swivel. The knees work both ways like we see a lot with droids and and actually, the elbow was also bent back like this out of the package. And that works down to a lot of narrowness at the foot. And again, like I said, the ankle is my big gripe. It is so thin. I go like this, and that's not the joint moving. That is that peg flexing. I go back, and it turns to about right there. Then bring it forward again. And I'm trying to get the foot to go. Okay, there we go. It did go forward. But then in between... It's kind of loose. So standing can be a little bit of a chore. It's not the usual, ha ha, the figure proved me wrong by standing up. It is very top heavy. I don't know if the first one had this problem. I haven't watched any reviews of it. And again, like I said, I don't have it, but I guess we're gonna try to balance it back and step away slowly. I guarantee I put that on the shelf and it's gonna stay there for a minute and then kick forward. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't like it. And that being that way kind of ruins for the rest of it. You know, I guess let's try to do some kind of action-y pose. Get them out and that, or it. I guess them here and like that and forward and try to get some turn right there. Did it turn or does it flex the peg? And I guarantee 90% of you are going to be like, mine stands fine, but, oh, is it? 
the cloth cape is nice, which you don't hear me say a lot about Hasbro soft goods. I guess because it's tattered and torn at the bottom and it's supposed to look like burlap just hanging over his shoulder, they have this seam running here and here so it stays down which I really, really like. I hate it when it floats up in the air like this or something. I also like the color of the plastic, and there is some paint here and there. I just wish it was more worn, like we saw in the show. But more than that, why isn't the visor painted? Oh, well, maybe it is. Is that a different red? Is that kind of a metallic? I do like the shoulder joint, though. It's a long dumbbell joint. The ball is inside, there's a rod, and then into the shoulder. So there is some up, some down, some forward and back. That's nifty. But speaking of articulation, there seems to be, okay, there we go. Is there a ball up in there with a hinge and then a ball at the bottom of the neck? Some up some down, a little bit of tilt side to side. Like I said, dumbbell at the shoulder, goes up, goes down, goes forward, goes back, and then outside of that is a hinge that goes up to there. There's no bicep cut, but because of the shape, it doesn't matter. You put it down at the bottom at the elbow, and it does the same thing. Swivel at the wrist, again, very thin with an up and down hinge for a trigger finger hand. Dumbbell joint at the mid torso, all kinds of movement. There's a ball coming out to the hip that allows, for, whoa, look at that. That's better than all the Spider-Mans, but that's because of the shape. There's nothing at the hip. Back, if you get around the slight butt plate, you can go all the way up that way too. Out, the armor is gonna run into it right there. Thigh swivel hidden behind the armor. Hinge and swivel at the knee comes up to 90 and rotates. We already talked about the ankle. There's a hinge that goes from there to there. And then a front facing pin for rocker. For accessories comes with this blaster that is almost battle droid like. It's not, but it has some of those beats. But didn't this use a rod, a, a staff? with the electro on each end for lightsaber fighting. Hmm. I wanted to open up Ezra next because while it is very nice to get an older Ezra in action figure form, as far as the Ahsoka show is concerned, this is already outdated. This is based on the hologram that Sabine has in episode one when she's on Lothal. So really, this is a lifelike version of Rebel season four Ezra. In fact, looking at the body, the clothes do match for the most part for what we saw from that season. But then of course the face and the hair is based on the actor who portrays Ezra in a Ahsoka. Taking that into account, this looks great. The photo reel is really, really nice again. And I am so glad they seem to have gotten over that sweaty hump. You know what I mean? The, the shiny faces that took a lot away from the resemblance, from the details. Have his scar on his cheek. Some wear and tear, some silver marks up on the shoulder armor, down to the orange shirt underneath, and then down at the brown of the pants, which really are your standard pants. <laughs> there's seams, there's wrinkles, there's a fly, some greenish fingerless gloves, and then a bracer on the left side with some kind of communicator or something. It's been a while since I've seen Rebels. Have some dark lower leg armor, which at first I thought was black, but getting up close, it's a brown. It matches the holster. Have a knee pad sticking up with the foot underneath with the yellow strap and a yellow stripe, and that ties up to here. It's a bunch of colors used, but they all kind of work because this is how we think of Ezra. The holster rig's interesting. You have your standard Star Wars belt with the lump on the front and then a thickness going down to the holster on the right leg. Same thing on the other side, but it just goes down to a strap. It makes it kind of symmetrical. Like here's your holster, here's your hook. The articulation at the waist threw me off for a minute. Out of the package, it was shifted over to the side and I couldn't get him to straighten out. Then I realized you do have some back and forth with it. It's not a super amount. It's just enough to drive you nuts if you're trying to line up the front of the shirt to the fly. But then you do have some tilt to it, which <laughs> rocks kind of like a boat. Some back and some forward. And if you go too far forward, this is gonna get stuck up on the top of the crotch piece. Well, this is the butt piece, but the crotch is up here. It's, at it's attached together. That's just anatomy. If that happens, you just shift forward a little bit, put it back down. But since we're talking articulation, there's your dumbbell joint at the top of the neck with the ball going down. Looking up, looking down. Some nice tilt to the side, to the other side. The butterfly has a little range to it, and it's not this getting in the way. That's soft and flexible. It's just 
that's your range. Pin coming out, rotates around with a hinge that goes up to there. Hinges swivel at the elbow and whoa. Then rotation, swivel at the wrist with an up and down hinge for a trigger finger hand, side to side on the left. Like we talked about, a dumbbell joint at the waist gets around and something and back and tilt and round twist. Ball coming out to the hip goes, oh, that's more flexible than I thought it'd be. Can come up and back and out. Swivel at the thigh. Hinge and swivel at the knee comes up slightly past 90 with some rotation. Hinge at the ankle goes back to here and forward to here and a front facing pin for rocker. For accessories we have another very standard Star Wars item with this blaster. It's not Han Solo's but it's close. That trigger finger needs some coaxing. To... There we go. There it went. Holds it very well. A little trouble putting it in the holster though. It should go to right there but there's this extra piece that only allows it to go right there. Okay, yeah, if you pull the holster out a little bit around that piece and force the gun down, yeah, that's most of the way. So thin right there, though. I'm gonna have him holding his lightsaber. There's your green blade, there's your individual hilt that comes out. There's a hook on his left hip, and that is a tight fit. Once you get it on there, it doesn't flop around, it doesn't fall off. Actually, that looks pretty sweet. Very heroic. Again, there's a shape to the blade that matches the hilt, but this will only go one way. Notice that this side is higher than this side. So if you go this way, it doesn't go all the way in. You have to turn it to right there and plug it in. But once it's in there, it's secure and works very nice for some saber poses. Then finally, there is Sabine, who I was looking forward to the most. Don't get me wrong, I like having Ezra and Morgan and uh, some of the others we've already gotten from Ahsoka, but Sabine is the most interesting looking figure. You know, she's got the Mandalorian armor. She has her own paint flourishes to it, her artistic touch. Have these stripes on the chest plate coming down angular with the purples and the whites and the orange and the reds. And that travels on up and around to the back plate. Grays, I guess I should say. That's not white. Have the blue shoulder pad with the purple. And then the other shoulder pad brings in the rebellion symbol. With silver gauntlets with these arrows painted on. I didn't notice those in the show but now that I see them it's, it's a lot of little detail. The left knee pad is black with an orange stripe and then the kick pad has some orange and red and on the other side it has a smaller red stripe and a red knee pad along with a little armor on the top of the foot with some reds and some yellows. The belts are pretty plain. It's that reddish brown we've seen on quite a few Mandalorians and then some silver hits for the buckles and this hook. Then the undersuit is a dark brown all over under that armor. Basically like Ezra, this is her look from the last time we see her in the animated series. Getting up to the head, it is a nice likeness. There's the purple hair with a slight wash to it. Bring out that sculpt and then a little color to the lips, but looking at the eyes, you're seeing what I'm seeing, right? The closer I looked, the more I realized the eyes are kind of printed high for the sculpt. It's on the upper lid, kind of working down into the eye sculpt. I wish I'd seen that in the package when I bought it. And while I'm looking this close, I guess you could say that the lip color is slightly off here, but I like that it makes it look like she's kind of smirking. There's a slight smile to it. So I'm not going to complain about that part. And I guess I could say, oh, I'm just going to hide it under the helmet, but we'll get to that. Overall, I like the proportions. It looks like what we see in the show. Going over articulation, there is a dumbbell at the top of the neck with a ball down at the bottom behind that collar. Looks up and looks down. Ooh, a lot of tilt. Left and right. And something I should have been saying about every figure because I've had to fix it after every articulation run through is that the bottom has a tendency to work sideways and then stay sideways. So you got to kind of straighten it out sometimes, get it to the front. The chest armor is a rubber overlay and there is a butterfly joint hidden in there, but like some of the others, it's not a lot of range forward and back. But there is a pin that rotates the arm around with a hinge at the shoulder, goes up to there. Hinge and swivel at the elbow, uh, barely past 90 with some rotation. Rotation at the wrist with a hinge up and down. Butterfly joint under that overlay in the mid torso, gets some hula hoop, nice range. Ball coming out to the hip, comes up to there and goes back and then, whoa, out all the way. No swivel at the thigh, but it does rotate a bit at the hip. Hinge and swivel at the knee comes up to, again, slightly past 90 with some in and out. Hinge at the ankle goes back really, really nice. Forward, you get about that much. Then there's forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, she comes with two Mandalorian blasters, which we have seen before, but this time around, again, because Sabine is an artist, she's painted 
them different from each other. She has no problem holding them in her hands, but they're pretty unobtrusive in the holsters too. They do not affect posing whatsoever. It comes with the lightsaber she uses in the series, which is Ezra's, but there is a difference. Hu Yang said that she had modified it a bit, but if we're going just by the accessories, Ezra's is silver and Sabine's is black. She's just painted parts of it. Otherwise, the sculpt is exactly the same. Well, okay, the ring at the top is angle different. That's interesting they made that change. They could have just left it as it was. In fact, we're going to try that out. You put Ezra's on and, oh, well, it hangs down too. It does do some swinging though. Put Sabine's on and yeah, it doesn't swing near as much. They modified it to work better with the figure. That's kind of cool. But then there is the helmet. And don't get me wrong, this sculpt is nice. It's her helmet. It has the angled up visor. It has the white on top, the grays, the reds, the lighter grays. The rangefinder does swing down in front. There's the hints of blue on both sides. Although now that I'm looking at it, this side is higher than this side. Is it warped? What's going on there? Either way, it is too small to fit all the way over her head. You can kind of have her looking up and make the helmet look forward, but you start looking too close and her hair sticking out or her chin sticking out. And that's because her hair sculpted up on top. It gets in the way. That's just how plastic works. I was going to say, if you don't look too close, it's passable, but then it sits up really high. It, it, <laughs> It doesn't look right. I will say that she's not wearing it most of the time in the show, so I guess she should be holding it or having it down here, but still, it'd be nice for her to actually wear it. But the trade-off there would have been something like Bo-Katan, where they flatten out her hair so it wouldn't stick out and get in the way of the helmet. So... And no, the Rebels Season 1 helmet doesn't work at all. This and the Bad Batch Season 2 is why I want to see alternate heads instead of workable masks. That way you can make the hair look right and then make the helmet look right on the body. And all it consists of is filling this in and putting a socket in and making this interchangeable. Standing them all side by side, which standing is a strong term when you're talking about the HK-87 droid, they all look to be in scale with each other. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Ezra stands at about five and three quarter. Sabine stands at a little under five and a half. Ahsoka stands at about five and seven... Asshole. Five and seven eighths. Elsbeth stands at about five and five eighths. Almost six inches tall. It could be the coolest sculpt in the world, but if it can't stand on a shelf or in action poses, it's about useless to me. Here's Ahsoka with her younger self and then a Clone Wars Anakin that got a lot more cooler with this series. Don't get me wrong, this was my main display Anakin. Now that we've seen it in live action, I'm gonna need a different head for this. I'm gonna need some updates to it. But just for giggles, here she is with the Black Series Book of Boba Fett, Cad Bane, and the SH Figure Arts later Mandalorian. Here's Morgan Elsbeth with that same Mandalorian, and then Asajj Ventress, which is funny because uh, during a weekly, I said, oh, we're going to get our first Witch of Dathomir. I forgot all about Asajj. And what's even funnier is that I forgot Asajj used those same dark ray legs. So it makes sense for Morgan to use those same legs too. It's Dathomirian wardrobe, right? Again, I do not have the first HK-87 droid, but here's the last security droid. I forgot how big Kanan actually was, but it kind of works because younger Ezra was also pretty short, so he's not a tall guy. And then here's the new Ezra and Sabine next to the Rebels chopper. But then I didn't expect this either. The God damn it. But it works perfectly next to Bo-Katan, so... So at the end of the day, a good starter wave for the Ahsoka series. And I don't mean that in a bad way, I just mean that it's knocking out some of the main characters of the show right off the bat. And yet, despite all the trouble I had with this figure throughout this review, I was finally able to get him to stand by bending his knees a little bit. So that cock forward that he has on his foot is now leveled out. So... He can hit an action pose, but it's still, well, okay, it's more stable than it has been all evening, but it's still questionable. You know, I still look at it and think, 
you're going to fall any minute. But I was able to stabilize them a little bit, finally, after much frustration. And while these are all nice, what makes them even nicer is that we know this is just the tip of the iceberg. They've already announced more characters coming. So it's not just these and then we can hope for that or that or that. Even though the last episode was just pure action figure goodness. I want figures of all those. But Hasbro already seems to be chipping away at my major wants from Ahsoka. But best of all, the series is running right now as I record this, and I already have figures from it. That, that is pretty sweet. That raises my excitement level even higher. I'm not watching something, and then six months later, the figures come along, and I'm like, well, okay, yeah, that's cool. I enjoyed that series, but right now I'm watching this series. No, I am neck deep in Ahsoka at the moment. I'm loving it, and now I have action figures of it as it's happening. I wish that happened all the time. I know it can't because of reasons, but when it happens, it's magical. Also, after PulseCon and them showing the vintage collection chopper with the extra head movement and everything, I fully expect a new version that is specifically Ahsoka series, the live action, and not Rebels. I mean, this will do, definitely. This is an amazing little chopper figure, but after seeing what the vintage collection figure can do, yeah, I'll buy an upgrade.